Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old sign For old lang sign, my dear, for old lang sign. Talk a cup of kindness yet for days of long sign And here's a hand, my trusty friend, and just a hand of thine. We'll talk a cup of kindness yet for all. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang sign? For old lang sign, my dear, for old lang sign. I'm just going to read you guys um, a letter I wrote to my dad. Um, well, you'll know when I wrote it when I start reading it. So, dear dad, it's been 23 days, 5 hours and 25 minutes since you took your last breath and became a resident of heaven. I've cried more in the last three and a bit weeks than I have in my entire 40 and a half years. But don't you worry, not at all those tears have been sad ones. I'm beyond overjoyed that you are free of your broken body, released from your tortured existence and now smiling in the presence of our Lord and Saviour. Now to survive the grief. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I can only thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of you, all you have taught me as I'm having to draw on all of it at the moment. The biggest thing you taught me was to love Jesus with all my heart, to trust in him at all times and to not lean on my own understanding. Next thing was to tithe. I couldn't possibly count the amount of times you said to me, give that first 10% back to the Lord and the remaining 90% will go so much further than the 100% ever would have. Now that was a harder one to fully take on board and I'm going to be honest, I've only been doing it properly for about six years now, but guess what, you're right, surprise, surprise. I have not struggled financially in all that time. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. For me personally, for my emotional health, the standout thing you taught me was to believe in myself. You constantly told me that I could do anything as long as I tried my best. I struggled at school big time with my eyesight, with bullies and teasers, 
with insensitive and uncaring teachers, but you were always my strongest advocate whenever I worried about my marks not being as good as I would have liked or what I imagined you would have liked. You were so quick to tell me that as long as I'd tried my best, then you were more than happy with that. Psalm 18, 32, 34. The God who equipped me with strength and made my way blameless. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You also taught me about strength. You displayed the utmost integrity and grace during hardships that most would have broken under. Not everyone knows all the things you, you struggled with, but we, your family, and those closest to you knew, and we can only marvel at how you stayed strong right to the very last days. You gave my children the best poppy they could have, have, have asked for, and an awesome handshake that I'm sure they'll never forget. You may not have been able to run around with them, but you displayed such loving traits to them that will set them in good stead for the lives ahead of them. Hebrews 12.1 Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us walk with endurance the race that is set before us. You gave my husband an example of what a loving, devoted husband should be, as well as showing him how a Christian stays strong amongst life's struggles and still smiles while going through it. You taught me how to be a godly parent. However, it's something I have to constantly work on. Funny that. You taught me that much wisdom can be gleaned from Daffy Duck, and that humour is needed for nearly every facet of life. You taught me that hymns are awesome, rich and full of goodness. They are greatly helping me to get through this tough time. My children now know all the words to most old hymns. You taught me about perseverance. Life isn't always easy, but it doesn't mean you throw the towel in or have a hissy fit about it. Colossians 1, 11 to 12. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. You taught me about being patient. I watched you wait extremely patiently to be taken home to the Lord. Some of the things you had to endure in your 67 years are too heartbreaking to even think on, let alone write down, but you continue to trust in the Lord and his plan for your life. Isaiah 40, 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You also taught me that it's okay to not always be okay. The amount of times I had to see you in tears, my heart breaking for you and the quality of life you were having to endure were torturous. But you always pulled yourself out of it, dried your eyes with one of your many, many hankies and curved your lips up into a huge smile. You knew your finest days were yet to come. Romans 8.18 I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. You taught me about the importance of family. I was beyond blessed to have been given you as my dad for 40 and a half years and honestly couldn't have asked for a better dad. You showed me that it's not worth letting little squabbles get in the way of the love of family members. You taught me about tolerance. You were treated badly by some but you, were never, you never displayed bitterness or resentment. Ephesians 4 verse 2, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. You taught me about honesty, loyalty, fairness, responsibility, compassion and accountability. I honestly could go on and on about all you modelled to me in your time here, but in the interest of saving time, I'll wrap up by saying that I hope you will take it as the biggest compliment that giving you back to the Lord was the hardest thing I ever had to do. I don't say that lightly. It seriously was the most gut-wrenching, agonizing thing I have ever had to do. I have prayed for years that you would be taken home to glory and be spared from all your hardships, but when I really did it seriously in the last two months of your time with us, I always had to follow the request up with, but please give me the strength to survive it when you've taken him. When that stethoscope was placed over your heart and it was confirmed you had gone, six of your girls collapsed to the ground and wailed, really wailed. 
Now that is love right there, that deep abiding, rip my heart out love. That will never be forgotten. You left a lasting legacy, Dad, and a deep handprint on our hearts. You loved us so much, so unconditionally, and you know that's what will get us through this. You loved us enough to get us through the time we'll need to be without you. I also know that you smiled, turned around, and went with those angels because you knew you'd, let up, you'd left us with a firm foundation in which to base our lives on, the Word of God. We can know that we'll get through anything life throws at us if we only rely on God and His Word. The biggest reason we can do that with absolute faith and not a hint of doubt is because you modelled it to us. I love you more than words can say. See you soon, Daddy. -o. song